uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, so about uh, 15 hours and 30 minutes into the 27th day of July. Uh, I had forgotten my days again because we did a uh, vlog last night, a transitions vlog. Uh, I think it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't remember. <laughs> what date I said it was, but anyways. Anyways, uh, we're back on the road again, we just have another chat. This is where we seem to have our more, more in-depth conversations. But their conversations on the left, they thought to go through the line. Uh, and there's a lot to, there's a lot to, you know, the research, because there are a lot, many different aspects of the research. There are different sort of uh, things that sort of pop up. This goes back to Lionel again. Uh, it's ongoing, it's ongoing and, con and continuous. So, you know, why does Lionel appear in the uh, title so often? Well, simply because uh, he's one of the key factors. He's one of the, he's one of the edges of the puzzle. <laughs> so, uh, you keep going back to him as reference. Uh, one, for his, his connection to other people in society who have uh, sort of the power right now. Uh, but also at the same time... Um, you want to see how his personality, what the, what, what the personality is like, how it shifts, how it changes, uh, depending on the situation, because this will give you an insight into uh, people like Voltaire, who sort of came up in these different environments. Uh, what were they like? What, 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 you know, if you, if you sat down and met Voltaire, what would he be like? You know, what would his personality be? And that's something that's, you know, uh, oh, oh, me, of, of particular interest. So it gives you an insight into how people think and why they think what they think. So he is in the, he's a great example of that. So you have to sit through his, his quirks and his so on and so forth and sort of get the personal affect, the, the personal affect, but I think it, sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not okay, it just, it's a long process, and the thing is once you do it with one person, you do it long enough with one person, you can go out and do that same thing for another person, and that's just sort of the, the thing of watching uh, the, the sort of called uh, the, the useful idiots, and this is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, the officer, the CIA officer, that was uh, uh, giving a speech on on how Donald Trump is an agent for Russia. This is back at the point in time for for, for the uh, the Mueller project. The Mueller report, I should say. And the thing is, is that you see how he, he begins by flattering the audience. And that's the initial lore to get his, his ex, what, he ever, what else he's going to say in, in, in acceptance. He wants the people to accept what he says really without question. And he, he achieves this by initially flattering the audience, calling them a doll. You know, I've been, this, you'll hear that, you'll hear this in line Oh, I don't have the comics on because you guys are such children. Right? He says, well, I'm now off of my private place now, and now I can speak to adults. Well, he, you know, this guy starts out does the exact same thing. He starts out by saying, oh, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm finally in a room with adults. There's people I can talk to and so on and so forth. And they also sort of clap and applaud, and they like that and, because now they're something special. And, but the thing is, 
what it does is it opens up the audience in terms of their acceptance of what he's going to say. And so what happens when you go from simply watching a person and going, oh yeah, interesting, to now doing full analysis on what the behavior is. And you can see the mechanism by which the person operates. And so you now do this for, well, anything else you watch on YouTube, or even, you can even get personalities. If you watch a person, an actor, from show to show, that they, they maybe they, they change shows, change characters, does the person actually change the character, or is there a, is, is a topical change? In other words, are there tells within the personality that will always pop up no matter what role they're playing? Playing leapfrog with the bus. <laughs> and so this is this, this is how you do analysis. This is how, and then this is one of one of the reasons why I leave Brian LeBron in the title is because he, he said he, he, he's a key factor. This is how you begin to sort of understand what he is and how is what he's about, and then how to adjust your understandings again with other people and and how you would assess. Or, or observe their behaviors. So it does become uh, it's sort of a, a leisurely form of work. If you are doing work, you are doing analysis. But what happens is it's, it's not as it's not, as it's not the daily grind. Let's put it this way: it's not the daily grind. The daily grind grinds you into a powder, it leaves you exhausted, uh, and you don't end up feeling too well afterwards. Uh, this isn't necessarily like that. Of course, if you're doing this for prolonged periods of time, yeah, it's going to knock you out. But uh, it's not necessarily the same thing as doing a nine to five job. It's a, the daily grind. The daily grind is, you know, something else completely. And so these all things, everything goes into, will eventually go into the notebook. But what's happened, what's seeing is that we're in the period of back, <coughs> I'm stumbling again. We're in the period of back to schools. We're back to school schools already started. Uh, for me, the, the back to school will sort of begin uh, when I get back from uh, my office up north. And that's typically around the 8th or something like that. Uh, and as that occurs, uh, uh, I'll be bringing my book, notebooks back online again, and there'll be more of a more of an effort. Uh, to start entering the notes that I picked up over the summer, so the work I picked up over the summer will come into the textbooks, will come into the notebooks. And we'll be able to sort of uh, develop a better sense of what's going on in terms of the puzzle. We have a loose assortment of pieces. They haven't been the, 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 the notes we've gathered, the bit the pieces we've gathered uh, currently over the summer are still very loose. They're, they're not fully or functionally organized. And this is sort of uh, why we do the notes. The notes uh, and the conversations help give a loose 
understanding of losing treatment in terms of the organization of how you're going to organize your notebook when uh, school starts again. And this, is, this is how the research end, ends up working out. It works out pretty well like that, is that you use your time off, so to speak, to organize your notebooks. So that's, you know, where things stand right now. And I think, once again, is that we're in a situation and we're in a period where it's not going to be about the government, what the government does. It's about what we do and how we do things. And this is a completely different uh, set of understandings. People who are self-sufficient understand this and more or less already accepted it. But those who are in society, like, they're part of the sort of work called the uh, organism. Organism, the organism called society that produces the politicians. Well, that's a complete collapse. Right and so, those people like Lionel LeBron, who is in society, uh, you know, even though he bemoans it, uh, he uh, is at, he's at a loss. His world is collapsing. bad thing it just means another summer gone oh. one of the good things about uh, sort of the summer sort of mini project in terms of collecting the data and collecting the information and sort of putting the pieces together in the property is you can figure out what people are lying to you. Is there are a number of tells, but they, sometimes they're very subtle. There are people who are very good at the lies, and there's not only just one person involved, but there's several people involved. Uh, when several people are involved in a lie, that's what you call a conspiracy. So how do you unravel it? Because in many cases, people involved in the conspiracy are in it for their own particular reasons. They're not on the same page. They just simply have a common interest. Now, specifically what that common interest is, is not necessarily known. And in many cases, it's uh, just simply money. 
someone's going to pay them X amount of dollars and they're going to get paid. And so that's, that's their entire incentive. Of course, when that another incentive comes along that's maybe better or, you know, something along the line, uh, uh, they jump at another opportunity. And this is the case here, it's, uh, to some degree, with the lecture given uh, during uh, Obama's investigation, uh, uh, not Obama, uh, Donald Trump's investigation, uh, Mueller report type of thing, when the Mueller investigation was going on about Donald Trump. And it had a good, it, the lecture had to do with whether or not he was in a, he was a election spy. Now you would think that you would get someone like a general or a colonel or you know someone like a captain uh, high up in intelligence, but they didn't do that. They got a petty officer. A petty officer is essentially a person who didn't make the military grade. It's, it's known as a non-commissioned officer. In the army, they'd be equivalent to a sergeant. In other words, their significance wouldn't be wouldn't be uh, all that significant. <laughs> In other words, they would not be significant. Got a bit of traffic here. And at night like this, I don't want to really jut out and hope someone sees me, so I have to wait for... It's clear on the right now. I'm waiting for the clearance on the left. And it should be one car here. They're going very, very slowly. Some people are speed demons. Other people, not so much. Talking about this again, it's a lecture given at these so-called high, high society clubs. And this was for uh, Democrats, and this was during the uh, Trump investigation, uh, the, in terms of the Mueller report, where they were doing the impeachment trial. This was, so, in other words, Trump was president. And they had a petty, uh, a petty officer, and, and that means a non-commissioned soldier, uh, who was supposedly with the CIA. The problem is, the person who was at that level wouldn't have the clearance to, to, to verify anything. In other words, they got someone who had military credentials, small, you, you know, they were, they were tiny, slapped the label on them, CIA analyst, Put them up on the stage, gave them gave them money for a book, and said, "Here, you're going to tell this story." The problem is, and he made this mistake. Instead of saying the president was President Trump, he was talking about President Obama. Now this is a mis this is a mistake. In many cases, a strategic mis mistake. But what it meant was that al al although Trump had officially taken office, President Obama had never left office. In other words, this is what I was saying. That, oh, they're, they're not going to change in the middle of the game. They're not going to name one person president. You don't have two presidents of the United States. Well, that's exactly what happened with Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump was president. They did everything they could do to, to, to camp him. And the real president under under Trump was Obama. This is who a large chunk of the military, this is who uh, a large chunk of the uh, bureaucracy were listening. They weren't listening to Trump. They were taking orders, marching orders from Obama.
So the steal what the steal was on from, from a long time ago in terms of stealing the election. <laughs> treasure hunters who are former former military, they're ex-military. Well they have a lot of skills and you know it's, it's basically a modern day Indiana Jones. And they battle the bad guys and of course they win the at the end of the day and everyone's safe and happy. You know, everyone claps and cheers. But the problem is is that the real pro the problems in the real world aren't that simple. They're very complex actually. And rather than being done within, well, a matter of a half hour to two hours within a movie, because there's a lot of stuff they montage out, there's an enormous amount that, that the amount of time it takes between various different events. And it, it could seem like, well, days before you get anywhere. And it's those days, those, that hang time within the montage, that in many cases is the most difficult. And this is what you're seeing with, with Lionel LeBron. We're in a, 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 a sort of a, a swing state right now. We're in a position of uncertainty where there is no fundamental direction. So nothing clear is around. So the question is, what's next? And the thing is, there is no answer to that. And it's driving him up a wall. Because he's a third person who likes certainty. And this was happening. This is what happened during the election. He lost his nerve. So he could he wasn't an effective fighter. He sort of represented the doubt that Trump was going to lose because they were going to steal the election. And, they, and there was nothing that Trump could have done. He's blaming Trump for the loss of Georgia. But Georgia had nothing to do Georgia had nothing to do with Trump. It's the fact that the Republicans in Georgia had sold out. And this is what's happening in Texas. The Republicans in Texas are selling out. So it's not an issue of what Trump could have done. Trump has no ally in the GOPs. Geo, the GOP is not with Trump. And he cannot rely on them. And the same is neither can the, the, the voting Republican. The conservative, the, the GOP, the Republican, is now gone. There is no GOP, there is no Republican, there is no conservative, because they all sell out. There's a lot of money out there to go around in bribes, uh, and that's what's happening. So how do you deal with a situation like that? Well, that, rely, that sort of lies in the fact of the people. The generals and so on and so forth, the ones who sort of maintain this control, only could do so much. And most of these generals know that their low man on the tentacle is portable and will never be given anything. So typically, you can bribe you can bribe a general and stay and keep your existence half decent. This is the way, this is the way a lot of the barter trade work. You, you, you see this in sort of movie we watched. Uh, that the people, regardless of the type of government they had, really did indeed survive. It wasn't an easy survival, but they did indeed survive. They were able to manage. The question becomes, you know, what happens next? 